Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the lesson on biogenesis. To talk about biogenesis, which means life coming from life, that life makes life, we've got to talk about spontaneous generation. Hundreds of years ago, a belief known as spontaneous generation or abiogenesis was quite common. When you put an A in front of a word like biogenesis, it means not that, like when you say that something's atypical or asexual, not typical, not sexual. So abiogenesis means life is not coming from life. Life is just popping up from out of nothing. Uh, we know that cells make cells, which make cells, which make cells, and so on. But if you go back to the 1300s, 1400s, 1500s, this was quite common. Um, and I have this mouse here because um, people thought, like if you went into a place where there's hay, like a barn, and uh, it would rain out, they thought that when the rain hit the hay, um, mice would, would come out of it. And, and I don't mean that just that mice were hiding. I mean that mice were just born out of it, that hay gives rise to mice when it rains. What probably happened was when it rained, the mice went in for shelter um, to get out of the rain. And that's why they saw the, the mice around the hay. But people weren't using the scientific method to disprove that. It was just kind of a word of mouth thing. Like, you know, someone had an idea of like, oh, that's how that happens. And they would tell someone else and it would just kind of get passed around. And that's pseudoscience. So this was the belief that life could consistently arise from non-living matter. Pseudoscience is, is false. It's not true. It's not substantiated on actual research uh, where you have controlled variables. Another belief was that if you put raw meat outside, maggots would, would come out of it. Um, you know, possibly something in the air, some kind of a life force would enter the raw meat and cause maggots to be born. Um, it didn't strike them that you would need flies, adult flies, to actually land on the meat and lay their little eggs that, that hatch into maggots. Um, and then they grow up into more adult flies. But um, this was just something that was a common belief um, until the scientific revolution. So from the start of the scientific revolution, um, you know, just after uh, the Renaissance, and, and that spurred a lot of it more intellectual thinking, um, you finally get into um, the 1600s where there were a lot of advances via the scientific method to disprove some of these ridiculous things. So a few individuals, starting with the 1600s, uh, sought to disprove this theory. Francesco Redi, Lazzaro Spallanzani, and Louis Pasteur. The amazing thing about these three gentlemen is they lived approximately 100 years apart. Um, Francesco Redi from the 1620s to 1690s, Spallanzani from the 1720s to 1790s, and Louis Pasteur uh, from the 1820s to 1890s. Um, so not exactly 100 years apart, but pretty darn close. And it was this nice progression of getting closer and closer to disproving spontaneous generation. Um, finally, it was Louis Pasteur that, that put the nail in the coffin in terms of laying spontaneous generation to rest. So let's start with Francesco Redi's experiment. He was a 17th century Italian scientist living in the 1600s. And interesting fact about him, a crater on Mars uh, named after Redi. So here he is. Uh, with his nice little wig. Uh, he wanted to, to debunk the theory that maggots, fly larvae, emerge from rotting, spoiling raw meat. So here's what he did. He used kind of a basic scientific method here. Two jars, one covered with gauze, and one not. So here's no gauze, and here's our meat at the bottom. This one. Has gauze. Same kind of meat. And he left them out. Well, of course, what happened here is flies could come in and lay their little offspring. And of course, you know, maggots develop there. Here, flies 
could not get past the gauze. They, oh, they desperately wanted to have this little food source down there and, and you know, lay their, their offspring down on, on this place where they could get some nice nutrition, but they couldn't. And so you would think um, Francesco Reddy is like, hey, uh, done deal. I've disproved this. And this did convince enough people, but not everyone. Um, there were still a lot of skeptics at this point because people would say things to him like, oh, Francesco, you see, in this particular beaker, you have blocked out the, uh, the vital force in the air. There's a life force, and, and this particular beaker could not allow the life force to get into the meat. See here, you, you could have the air getting into here enough and, and allowing the meat to, to give rise to these. And um, people are going to be skeptical, you know, so... He did convince a lot of people, but uh, not clearly enough. So this spontaneous generation idea um, kept on. So yeah, great, you know, great experiment really in terms of having a control and having an experimental group where you actually um, block out those flies from getting to there. But yeah, they insisted that this one, the 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 life force that people describe, some kind of stuff uh, was allowed to get into the meat, but, but not here. Somehow he blocked out the, uh, the life force.